Okay. Well, I've done public speaking before, because by the time we got to um, 2005, or for sure by the time of the Samara bombing in Iraq in February of 2006, there were only a couple of American NGOs that were left outside the perimeter, outside the green zone and militarized perimeter. <clears throat> and um, as such, we were very attractive to an array of distinguished journalists, print journalists, that would come down from their enclaves in Baghdad to try to get a sense of what was going on um, down in the South. So in that sense, I got to express myself quite a bit about the situation in Iraq. I was there for seven years. And then I was ferried back from time to time to the United States to give testimony. And as Josh said, at one point eventually left Iraq and created an advocacy platform in Washington with the support of some other NGOs that argued for reform, reformation of the official aid mechanisms in Washington. This took place during the quadrennial review that you said the State Department. <clears throat> so given that I have had a fair amount of time in most of those settings that I just mentioned talking about Iraq, one thing I've virtually never done um, since <coughs> my boy and girl were very young. I've never read to people. <laughs> so I'll tell you this, it's a new experience, but perhaps it's one that will provide some discipline that I don't often have when I'm just talking extemporaneously. Uh, right, Joellen? Yes. <laughs> so what I'm going to do then, um, as is sort of expected, I'm told. I'm going to read, uh, I have an hour. I'm, I'm going to read three, maybe four snippets here to give you a sense of the book. It's hard because this isn't a, a book that you begin and just run to the end or walk to the end or whatever, meander to the end. This is a composite that has some it, it intense chapters that, if you were kind, you might say were gripping, but it also has a fair amount of uh, script on the polemic, the polemic surrounding the American intervention in Iraq, and more so the whole idea of right relations between the United States and countries around the world. We, this is, I think, pertinent at this moment when we are, as a country, we are grappling with the impact of our interventions overseas and how to best move forward as, as the hegemon with those. I call in my book for radical reform. Uh, for a variety of reasons, which if you're interested, we can talk about in the Q&A, um, or even after the, the hour is up here. In the theme that goes through from beginning to end on this book, and I'll just end with this and then I'll read, it's um, 1961, it's John Kennedy, and it's the Foreign Assistance Act. So it's a time, I was 15 or 16, it was a time when the United States, post-World War II, <clears throat> the apogee of the Industrial Revolution, it was just roaring through our country. <clears throat> and it was basically a time 
you could say hubris or arrogance or optimism. <laughs> At that particular time when we were in locked combat with a different ideology and we were the champions of liberal democracy at that particular point. And this Foreign Assistance Act, among other things, created what has been variously been funded between 20 billion and 30 billion a year of taxpayer assistance, not for emergency response, Biafra or Ethiopia in the main, <clears throat> but to change attitudes and performance overseas in the countries where we were working, so as to benefit from and to replicate the American narrative. When General James Jones, the former head of the National Security Council, was asked I, what was a defining theme of our international relations overseas, he was very clear and he's a very thoughtful person. <clears throat> it was to promote the American narrative overseas. And previous to that, in the main, it had been humanitarian assistance, and a big part of that had been food assistance. This is under the Eisenhower years. That's a very big assumption that on the surface, at the time in 1961, did not seem wayward. And the practitioners went in to try to persuade other populations at the community level or the national level about accepting our narrative as their narrative. And this book is mostly about that. <clears throat> and it takes one foot soldier of that effort, namely myself, but there were hundreds of thousands, some in the audience here, right through to the time when they left the business. And they left the business, say in my case in 2017, a lot less hopeful <clears throat> that that had been a correct course for us and not had not in the end in the end and in the main cause more harm than good overseas. Again, I want to make this clear. I'm not talking about humanitarian assistance. I'm not talking about saving precious lives, whether it's from cholera or displaced people fleeing violence. I'm talking about the presumption to develop you to the point where you accept the major tenets of my narrative as yours. Okay, now.